بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم دكتورة ألفة نوح رياض أستاذ أمراض النساء والتوليد كلية طب القصر العيني I'm going to give a short note about the frequency and importance of ultrasonography in doing antenatal care to our patient. I think ultrasound in the first trimester is mandatory and of utmost importance. It should be done to diagnose pregnancy from the start, to exclude abnormalities, to diagnose twin pregnancy, which considered a critical situation and need a special entity and need special care and need special diagnosis for all types. As there are some types that need special care and need certain notification to the mother to be aware of it. So ultrasound in the first trimester should be done mandatory. Sometimes when patients come to us, there is still AUB or pregnancy of unknown origin, and the patient is obliged to repeat ultrasound weekly until we confirm that everything is okay. We have a viable. Uh, embryo, uh, we have uh, a healthy sac, we have uh, a healthy cervix without risk of abortion or risk of um, uh, inevitable uh, dilatation of the cervix. Uh, so ultrasound, the first trimester is mental. Sometimes we are enforced to do it repeatedly and we should uh, inform our patient that it is a must until you uh, are confirmed that everything is okay, so allow her to go and uh, to repeat her ultrasound regularly every month during the uh, routine antenatal rest. Uh, uh, also, uh, another ultrasound is important in the second trimester, is mandatory, whatever you are going to do scan or you will not do scan, uh, but prefer to do ultrasound scan as basic 2D scanning to exclude major congenital anomalies, and if there is any suspicion uh, for presence of anomaly, you should refer your patient to uh, second level of uh, uh, ultrasonographic examination. So everyone, every obstetrician should be aware of uh, doing the first ultrasonographic uh, basal level, by which he can exclude anomalies, uh, he can get presence of any abnormality to refer his patient to a specialist in level to ultrasound to detect the anomaly, to diagnose the anomaly, to guide the patient if there is any further pre natal or postnatal or even intranatal uh, care that should be uh, prepared during the uh, process of delivery for the presence of surgery, for the presence of a proper neonatologist according to the situation in the patient. So proper ultrasonographic examination in the second trimester is still mandatory. Again, examination in the third trimester is a special entity. Frequent visits are asked to our patient. You should explain to your patient that this is important because in the third trimester we have uh, an embryo, uh, have a fetus that uh, liable for complication, liable for uh, decreased blood supply, uh, maybe uh, enforced to do any interference to your patient according to the situation. So repeated ultrasonographic examination is mandatory. It is not harmful. There is no. Um, uh, studies that uh, uh, even uh, increase the risk of any abnormalities during the repeated ultrasound in the third trimester. And on the other hand, usually we measure the uh, value benefit uh, uh, or the benefit risk ratio. The benefit of repeated ultrasound in the third trimester overweight the uh, suspected or even the possible risk, which is very, very low in risk. Uh, so in the third trimester, your patient should do ultrasound every two weeks in seven and eight months. And then again, in the ninth month, she should be subjected to Doppler examination weekly. If you cannot do, you should refer your patient to do this at any place. You should confirm that the blood supply going to the uh, fetus is adequate regularly until you determine the patient date for delivery. This is mandatory and very important. Every visit you see your patient, not only Doppler, you should do what's termed as by physical profile. By physical profile, that state that your baby is okay for one week, including the fetal tone, fetal respiratory activity, the uh, fetal gross body movement, the amniotic fluid index, and if you can, to do the non-stress test. If no, it's okay to do the biphysical profile of eight over eight. Uh, plus minus Doppler, as we said, if you did, uh, if you suspect any abnormality, you should refer to your patient elsewhere to confirm that she's okay and can wait for uh, another one week till you uh, determine for her the expected date of the uh, Whether to give or not corticosteroid, if you uh, suspect the presence of any 
uh, possibility of anxiety of uh, delivery beyond before 38 weeks, you should give your patient prophylactic dose of corticosteroid, which is 24 uh, milligram over uh, 48 hours period. Uh, not more than this and never to be repeated. Uh, if there's no doubt that your patient will suffer from preterm labor, it's okay, allow her and don't, uh, or before 38 weeks, don't give her corticosteroid. Uh, the day the patient stay and uh, intertrine is better. And so if you can uh, confirm that your patient is okay and her baby is okay to stay, uh, wait until you can, uh, until the duration of pregnancy uh, allowed and then give her a date for uh, cesarean section. Uh, whether to shave or not to shave, uh, if you are going to want to shave before the cesarean section is it should be uh, asked uh, five days before the date of cesarean section. Never to do it on the, date, on the day of the operation or the one day uh, before. Thank you.